Hey lovelies, thanks for stopping by my channel today for this little trying new makeup fest. I'm excited to dive into a few of these new makeup items that I have. A couple were sent to me like right before I left for vacation or as I was on vacation and a couple things I just picked up recently from Sephora. So I'm gonna give you a little sneak peek at what we're gonna be using today. This is really just gonna be me giving you my first impressions on these things. But if we haven't met before, my name is Kelly and I'm a professional hair and makeup artist. And here on my channel, I strive to keep beauty real real honest, real relatable, and real fun. So if that sounds like something you'd enjoy, don't forget to click subscribe and hit that notification bell so you don't miss out on future videos. So like I said, we're just gonna be hanging out, trying some new makeup. I am actually gonna be headed out to teach a couple classes later today. So I'm hoping that this makeup all works because I have to wear it for the rest of the day. Speaking of makeup, let's talk about what we're gonna be using today. I do have the Nomad Verona palette. This was sent to me by Nomad. Thank you so much. I have not had a chance to dip into it yet. I know that, you know, this has been out for a moment, but I do think that it's gonna be a great one to have going into spring. I'm not quite sure what I'm gonna be doing yet for an eye look, but funny enough, and I did not plan this out, but I have a feeling we're gonna be doing sort of a monochromatic look because I have two new cheek products, one from House Labs. This is the new Color Fuse Blush and then the new Danessa Myrick's Yummy Skin Flushed Balm. This is the shade Prima Donna and this one is Watermelon Bliss. I must be having a vibe here. These are pretty close to each other, but that works okay because I think we're gonna use these together. So we'll of course be doing swatches, all of that good stuff. Uh, I do also have the BK Beauty and Risa Does Makeup collab. So they sent me over all four pairs of the lashes. And yesterday I was kind of choosing between two and I put a poll up on Instagram and I'm gonna be using the pair that you all chose. So I'm excited to try those out. Thank you to the brand for sending that. And then randomly when I was ordering on Sephora, as you probably know now, Glossier is now sold at Sephora and I did pick up one of the Glossier Balm.coms. Uh, I did have the mango one in the past and I know that everybody goes crazy over this wild fig shade that they brought back. So I am excited to try this out. I'm probably just gonna whack that on first for a little hydration. We'll see if it ends up being my lip color for the day or if I want something extra. And of course, other than that, I'll just be supplementing from other things in my collection. Since I do have a little vacation tan left, I might be drawing out some things for like spring and summer, which kind of is great because it gets me in the mood for that time of year. Like I'm like, I'm already like, by winter, let's get going with the spring. Well, is anybody ever like, hello winter? Not me, I'm always like, go fast winter, go fast. Anyway, let's get into this makeup. All right, like I said, I am first going to try out this balm.com. So I bought one of these many moons ago and I did actually really like it. The only thing is I hated the applicator and I'm so excited that the brand has changed it. If you ever tried the original of this, the packaging killed because it was this little like screw top with a small opening and it was rough. So like you didn't wanna place it directly on your lip because it would actually scrape and cut your lip. It was kind of bad planning. I don't know whoever decided that that was the thing. Oh, this is interesting. So I did see on the website that it was listed as a kind of like a muted coral or something like that. When I when I think of fig, I don't necessarily think of that. I don't know, for some reason, I was thinking more of the color on the like outside of the fig and not as much on the inside. But luckily I did read the, uh, <laughs> I did read the description and I decided to just go with it anyway because everybody says that they love this one. So let's just pop this on. This is just gonna be like a sheer wash. You can see there on my lower lip. Oh, my lips are really dehydrated right now. That's pretty. I mean, again, it's just a little bit of a sheer tint. And I'll just go ahead and pop a little bit of this on my hand. You can see it's just that like very sheer, sheer tint. It smells really nice and it feels very like velvety. That's the one thing about these balms is they aren't like overly Vaseline-y. They have like a really nice, I don't know, just like demi matte feel to them not overly glossy. So I think that like anybody could wear this even if you don't wanna look like you have like glossy lips. Okay, this is really nice. It feels really nice. I like the texture. I almost feel like this is a little bit more balmy and less, even less glossy than the other balm, but it could just be that it's been so long since I used it. It does have a very light fragrance to it, nothing overwhelming but it doesn't really have a flavor. So this is gonna be a nice hydrator, but I'm sure we'll be putting on another lip color later. Okay, we're gonna start with our eyes because I'm not quite sure fallout wise what I'll end up getting from this Verona palette. Uh, as I mentioned, I have a feeling I'm gonna be doing some of the shades from the love side of the palette just because 
just because of the blush. I mean, it's gonna go really well with the blush shades that I chose. I might draw into this other side for a shade or two. We'll have to see. Uh, I haven't tried any of these out. I really do like Nomad's formulas. The mattes especially are just beautiful. But right off the bat, I'm really intrigued to try both the Cupid shade and the Romeo shade. What I'll probably end up doing is swatching these to see what I think. The only thing is I don't want anything like too, too, too monochromatic. And that Romeo shade is not gonna give us like any difference once it's on the eyes compared to the cheek products that I got. I don't know, we're gonna kind of see here. Now, usually the first time I use a palette, I always just use concealer to prime my lids because that's what I do most days. But since I'm gonna be teaching until like seven o'clock tonight and it's about 10 o'clock right now, I wanna have something really long lasting. So I'm actually gonna go through with the Urban Decay Eden Primer. And then I'm probably just gonna lay a little bit of translucent powder over that just so we don't have quite as much gripping from the primer as we go through with the shadows. So that's what I'm gonna start out with. I will be right back and maybe I will have made some decisions by then. Okay, I'm glad I did a little swatcheroo here of these shimmers because it's definitely told me the way that I'm going to go because the two that have intrigued me most are actually more like topper shades. You can see here the, let me open the palette up so I can see these shades, Cupid and Moors. So this one is the one that looked like really, I was like, I didn't want to use it today because I didn't think it was going to go, but this one I was really intrigued to try and it really does look more like just like a topper shade. And same with Cupid. That one, that one is maybe going to be what we use on the inner corner. So I think it's going to be Romeo. I'm going to use Romeo on the lid. Now, normally I would say that I would grab a glitter glue, but honestly, that's not what I do most days. And I do already have like an eye primer down and I don't want my lids to feel like heavy. So I'm just going to wet my brush. I'm just gonna wet my brush. Now, as far as mattes, I do think that the one that kind of goes the best with the blush that we're using, you can see here, I just very lightly swatch these just to kind of see, but this warmer sort of like almost, honestly, it's almost like Viva Magenta, uh, the shade Rose is probably gonna be what I use in the crease. Ooh, I also really like this shade Light. That one is like a little bit more on the red side, but it's really pretty. We'll have to see, we'll have to see what we do here. Obviously, I'm just gonna end up playing, so wish me luck. All right, so far, so good. I have to say, as I had imagined from the swatches of those shimmers, I'm a little bit disappointed. It's almost like a, it's a very subtle shimmer. It's very subtle. I'm a little bit disappointed, but look at these mattes. These are gorgeous, gorgeous. I didn't try to finesse the edges too much because I'll probably do that once the rest of my makeup is on so I can get like a nice blurred effect. Who knows, maybe we'll even kind of like blend it into the blush. I'm not sure, this is all new to me too. So let's go ahead and dive into the skin. I'm just gonna throw a little foundation on quick. All right, good to go with the color. I did do this little combo here, followed up with the Dose of Colors Meet Your Hue Concealer. This is 12 light medium. And then for bronzer, I went ahead with the Chanel Le Beige. This is the deeper color, the tan deep bronze. I went ahead with a cream since one of our blush products is a cream. Speaking of, shall we try it? I am very excited. I figure we can go ahead and do the cheek color and then finish up the eyes so everything kind of blends together. So again, this is the shade Prima Donna. Uh, I was really trying to get shades since 
y'all, I, I don't really need any more blush, like ever. I probably don't ever need any more blush, but if I was gonna get a blush, I wanted to get shades that I don't really feel like I have. I don't think I have anything in my collection like this as far as cream products go. Ooh, this feels lovely. So I'm gonna go ahead and put this on. Now this is, I believe, considered to be more of a matte blush. Uh, we will go ahead and see what it looks like, but it looks pretty matte to me here. Um, obviously we're going to share it out a little bit more than that, but it does have that very nice balmy feel that the yummy skin, like the regular balm has. I do have that product. I do have a review, a very thorough review on those, by the way, I will make sure to have that link down below, but let's go ahead and see just how much we can kind of shear this out. Just even with the finger swatch, I think this is going to be really pretty. This to me is just going to be like the epitome of color to go with my tan right now. Now, for the House Labs blush, I knew I was going to get one of these. I really, really love the bronzer. And so I'm hoping that it has a similar feel. Mm, it's not the same. It's not quite as, um, it's not quite as velvety feeling. This really does feel just more, it's silky. It's very silky, but it's not quite that velvety feel that uh, that the bronzer has, but they are very close. The watermelon shade is a little bit more red, but I think that these will go really well together. I'm gonna take a risk here because I do wanna use both of these and I wanna use them on their own first, just so we can see what they're like. So I'm gonna do one on one side and then one on the other and then try to like add to the other side to balance everything out. I really hope this goes okay. But I do think that these are meant to be able to be used over the top of powders also because the regular balm is supposed to be able to be used over the top. We'll see, we'll see if this ends up being a hot mess and I have to like rush and like wash my face off. I hope that's not the case. So let's go ahead and grab a brush here. All right, I'm gonna take this Luxie small contouring brush and I've just dabbed a little bit onto the brush and I'm just gonna work this into my hand just to make sure we don't get like one huge splotch. And let's go ahead and try this shade out. Oh, this is really pretty. So just dabbing rather than like swirling just so I can keep the coverage of my foundation. I mean, obviously you're gonna be able to build this up quite a bit. And I love that these products have a high amount of pigment load so that they will work on most skin tones. I really think that this would show up on most skin tones. And I love that the brand shows images of lots of different depths of skin so that you can you know, kind of see like someone that sort of looks a little bit like your skin tone and you can see what it would look like on. I mean, that's really pretty. I could go I could go quite a bit more with this if I wanted to. I'm gonna hold out because uh, we still have some layering to do. <laughs> okay, now let's grab the House Labs. For this one, I definitely want like a nice loose brush. I have another Luxie brush here. This is the powder setting brush. We're just very lightly gonna dip into that. And let's work this onto this side. So I can see that this is a bit warmer in tone. It's going on really nicely and blending into the skin really well. Now, personally, I do usually prefer a blush that has a bit of luminosity to it, but this does not look chalky at all. That's for me the reason that sometimes I'm like, ooh, I need something that's got a little glow to it because sometimes matte blush can just sit on the skin and look very dry and powdery, and this is not doing that at all. And again, this is a blush color that you could really build up quite a bit. Very pretty, okay, so moment of truth. We're gonna take a little bit of that Danessa Myricks and we're gonna pop this over the top, see if we can like just kind of blend that in a little bit. Doesn't seem to be getting patchy at all or making any splotchiness. I mean, it's obviously getting much more saturated. Okay, now we have to go through the other side and add a little bit of the house. So I'm definitely going to pop a little bit more up through the top here just to blur into the eyeshadow a little bit. Almost like a little blush draping. Okay, we have a lot of blush going on right now. But I know that uh, it's gonna be it's gonna be a bit before I even leave the house, so we should be okay. This will probably soften out a little bit. 
I think that looks pretty good. They did blend in really nicely together. I feel like the side is not quite as pink towards the back, so I feel like I need to like add a little bit. These are definitely layering up really nicely. And I don't feel like I lost too much coverage. They both look really good. I do think that the flushed, while it is matte, it has more of like a, a skin-like matte to it. You know, it's got that little bit of, just that tiny little bit of like hydrated skin look. So I probably think I like the finish of this better, which I know, I mean, I'm always gonna love a cream blush more than a powder, but the powder, even before, you know, I added the flush balm over the top on this side, it looked really nice. It wasn't chalky at all. All right, I am really liking this. I think I'm just gonna go highlight free. I'll probably end up using a setting spray on my face just to kind of like set everything. Well, that's what setting spray does, obviously, but to just give a bit of a glow to the skin. So I'll do that at the end, but I don't feel like I need to add any extra glow. And now it's time to finish up the eye look, get some brows and some mascara on. So I'm gonna go ahead and do all that. Maybe I'll pick out a lip to wear as well. And then I cannot wait to try on these BK Beauty lashes. All right, I was just about to say, here is the final look pre-lashes, but I just realized that I don't have an inner corner shade on and I'm tempted to leave it like this because I do really like it as is, but I do think I'm going to pop on a little bit of this Cupid shade. You can see the shift there. We'll see if we can get it to stick. I do feel like these shades are just so like tightly pressed into the pan. It's been really hard to work any of this up. Okay, let's see if we can get it. I'm, I'm really having to like dig my brush in. I just have this random, boy, I'm using a lot of Luxie today. I have this random Luxie brush. Uh, I just figure like this one is the right size and I can kind of like use a little more pressure, but I'm not, I'm not getting much of these shimmers out of the pan here. I mean, I'm able to work it in with this brush, but I think you need like a really densely packed brush to be able to get that color to even like come off out of the pan, you know? It's like, it's very crammed in there. On the plus side, I didn't get any fallout from this, but I barely got any on my brush to be able to even get any fallout. I'll have more thoughts at the end here. Let's go ahead and throw on the lashes. So the two, so the two styles that I was really interested to try are the Day Club and Martini. So the Martini are this little, so the martini, so the martini are these, er. so the martini are the little accent lash you can see here. These are just gonna add a nice little pop, give you a little bit more of a cat eye feel. And then the other ones are the day club. So these ones are definitely like more light, fluttery. They are a full lash. I think that that would just really like add a bit of enhancement. Now I have two other pairs here. We have the Vegas and the Stiletto. Now these are definitely much more bold. I don't know that that's really for me. I think that they could be really beautiful. Like I could actually see taking the Vegas and cutting it in half and just using actually like the inner part as an outer corner pop, just because I do like that clustery look that these have that can be really fun sometimes. I'm just not one for wearing huge lashes. We'll see, once I end up using these other two styles, I will let you know my thoughts, but I just don't see myself using like a really large lash. So the one that was picked on Instagram was the martini lash. It was like 64% for the martini. So I will definitely be trying the day club in the future. I'll probably pop a picture on Instagram. By the way, if you're not following me, it's Keep Beauty Real. If you want to join the conversation over there. So let's go ahead and pop these little babies on. Like I said, I think that this is a great way if you have have not ever worn a lash or you have an eye shape that you think might be hard to wear a lash with, these are a really great option because it is just gonna add that pop on the outer corner. So I'm just going to go ahead and take off one side. I always give them just a little flex and I'm gonna pop on some glue. Now my favorite glue and really the only one that I use when I'm doing a traditional strip lash is the House of Lashes glue. So I have the clear one right here. They do also make a black, but we're gonna go through with the clear today. I love this glue because it dries really quickly. It also dries nice and clear and you don't really need a lot 
on the strip to make it last. So I was watching Lisa J's video and she was saying that she applies with her fingers and I do too, because I think we both started doing makeup before there were things like lash applicators and all of that. So I do have, by the way, uh, one coat of the Tower 28 Make Waves mascara on. That's what I popped on today. So let's go ahead and pop these on and we'll see. So I like to just place them and then I just pinch right at my lash line just to kind of like seal the deal down. And this is really nice. It just helps extend the lash, makes it feel just a little bit more voluminous without being too obvious. Let me go ahead and zoom you in so you can see here. And if I want to, I can go ahead and add another coat of mascara to the inner lash if I decide I want like a little bit of a thicker feel to sort of blend even more, but I actually like it where it's a little bit more drama on the outside. So we'll go ahead and pop on the other one, but I wanted you to see just the before and after. Now, another thing that is nice about a little lash like this is if you have a downturned eye shape, you can take the outer corner of this lash and place it just above where your natural lashes are. So like tipping up a little bit and it actually helps even out your eye shape just a bit more and give it a more of an upturned feel. And it's much easier to do that with a little like half lash or a little like demi lash rather than like a full lash because you're not having to like control a huge long band. I am very happy with these and I cannot feel them at all. I am used to wearing a lash, but I think that if you are not used to wearing a lash, this would be a good way to start and I don't necessarily think that you would feel that. Oh, and by the way, the one thing that I didn't mention was the lip. I went through with the Maybelline Superstay Vinyl Ink in the shade Koi and I just put on a very, very thin coat. It's much cooler than the rest of the makeup that we have on, but I think that that actually balances it out. I didn't want anything that was too pinky red because I didn't, I just didn't want to look like a Valentine's Day cupcake. I wanted to have a little bit more dimension, so I really like this. So I have lots of thoughts, lots of thoughts on all the things. Let's go ahead and talk about it. Okay, let's go in order of appearance, if you will. <laughs> so the Glossier Balm.com. This wild fig shade, I really did like it. I really love the texture of this. Like I said, I do feel like it's even more balmy than the original mango one that I got. And the packaging, A++ on the applicator change up, much more comfortable. I really like this. I could see getting another one maybe waiting for like a little sale. I mean, of course, Sephora throws out the coupons every once in a while, so I think I'll probably wait. And really right now, I don't need another lip balm, but I could definitely see getting a few of these once I need another lip balm, which won't be for a while. I really didn't even need that one. Curiosity just got me. All right, let's talk about the Nomad palette. Now this is definitely a very, very first impression. I only used, let's see, I used three matte shades and two shimmer shades out of all of these, right? So. It's not exactly like I've done a deep dive into this palette. I had a feeling this is gonna be the way it went. I love the mattes, the shimmers are lacking for me. And I can't say that for every Nomad palette that I've gotten. I really like the shimmers in the America's Park, the Whistler Snow Lodge palette. I just feel like this palette in particular, I just feel like the shimmers in here, almost all of them, the one that didn't seem quite as hard pressed was that tragedy shade uh, just from swatching it. But I feel like I already have hard pan in the two shades that I used and it's gonna be really hard to pick up. So I am a little bit disappointed in that. I do think that I saw something from the brand like right before I went on vacation that a few people had reached out to them about the hard pressing and that it was something that they hadn't intended, weren't expecting, and so I think that they had resent palettes out. I'm not sure on that. I'm gonna double check on that. I like the color story here. I do think that you have some nice options. I will be curious when I start to play with this a little bit more to see how a couple of these shades look as they're blurred out. I do think just from swatching them, they do have different undertones. Like the love shade is more of that kind of tomato red, whereas the, which one is this one? Light shade, that's definitely in that more like corally red shade. You have a warmer pink, a cool pink. So I don't think that it's all necessarily the same, but I'm curious on certain skin tones if it does end up kind of like blending into one. Although I do feel like I can tell a difference on my eye. Right off the bat, I do think that I wish that at least one of these was a little bit even more different to create more contrast. And obviously I did not dip into the death side at all, so I will have to do that in the future. But, you know, 
I can only get so many, so many shades on my eyeballs at one time. I will also let you know in a pinned comment how this makeup wore throughout the day, just kind of like giving you a general update on everything, since I will have a good eight, nine hours of wear to be able to update you on. Okay, let's talk about the cheek products. Honestly, I really liked them both. I do have to say, and I'm not necessarily surprised, I like the experience of using a balmy, kind of creamy feel. I think this is going to be a great option if you maybe want to dip into using a cream that isn't quite as glowy as some creams can be. This definitely has more of that, you know, skin finish, almost matte feel to it, but not like drying. I think that the one thing that I will say is most of the shades are very pigmented. So if you are going to apply them, use a brush that is very fluffy. And maybe even once you tap into the product, tap it onto your hand and kind of blend it into those bristles first so that you don't get like a lot of product on your cheek. If you're, you know, lighter skinned, I think that you won't want quite as much pigment as this can provide. But the fact that you can build it up if you want it and you have beautiful deeper skin, I think it's great that we have something that's gonna work on a variety of skin tones. So I'm really excited. I could definitely see picking up another shade or two of these in the future, probably gonna wait for a sale. Okay, the House Labs. This is very pretty. I was very excited to have this beautiful watermelon shade. I'm really excited to use this come into spring and summer. Personally, I would totally load this shade up under the cheeks and then just do a more simple eye look. I went light-handed today because the eye look is so bold, but I could definitely see having a very, very bright cheek, simple eye look, maybe mascara, a little bit of liner, and like a soft gloss on. I think that that could be gorgeous. So excited to use this one in the future. Will I pick up another shade? Probably not. The formula is nice. I just prefer usually something with a little bit of glow to it, but I just, I really wanted to try this out. I was hoping that it would have a little bit more of that feel of the velvet bronzer, but it's a nice blush. I think I got the shade that I was meant to have in my collection and it isn't a unique enough product that I need more of these in my collection. I do think if you love a good matte blush and you want something that is going to give you a beautiful finish on the skin, I say go for it. I think that this is a really nice formula. Do I think it's anything astounding? Not necessarily, but just the way that I felt about it looking on my skin, I do think that it is going to be an option for textured and drier skin types because it did look nice and blurring on the skin and not like that powdery chalky feel. So glad I tried this out, love the color. All right, now the lashes. So. I like the way that these look, I really do. I think that they're lightweight, they're super comfortable. The only thing I will say is looking at the pricing, so regular price, the Martini Lash is $18. And then the other lashes are between 22 and 24 for the full lash. Obviously like the more vampy styles are a little bit more. So the other brand of traditional lashes, like regular strip lashes that I like is House of Lashes. And those ones I think start at $12. So these are a bit more expensive, especially in the full strip lash. You know, they're like $10 more. Honestly, and I have not, you know, I have not worn these multiple times. I don't know about the quality of them as far as like multiple wears. They do say that you should be able to wear them multiple times. On the little card that BK Beauty sent me, it says easy application with long, comfortable wear. I will say they were really easy to apply, but I did only use the little half lash. Transformative looks with minimal effort. I will agree. Multiple wear lashes with safe storage case, which I feel like most come with now. And 100% cruelty-free vegan ultra soft lashes. So the quality of the case is really nice. It is a nicer quality than like, let's say the House of Lashes. This is like almost that box style. So it will probably stand up better if you pack them, you know, if they get a little bit squished because they are a really nice strong box case. I feel like the price is a little bit high. So I will say, if you are going to order them, make sure that you use a code like my code is Keep Beauty Real, and that will save you money. By the way, that is not affiliated. I do have affiliate links with the brand, but the code is not affiliated. So I would say either make sure you're using a code or wait for a sale to try these out. I do think for the price, they're just a little bit on the high side. They're just a little bit on the high side, but that is just my opinion. I think that they are a nice lash. I just think that you can get a similar lash for a little bit less money. So just wait for a sale and then they kind of like even each other out. They'll be around the same price. And that's one thing too. When I remove these tonight, I will let you know how they held up, how they felt getting shaped and put back into the box. Make sure you always keep your lash boxes just so you have a safe place to pop them back into and keep them in shape. So go ahead and check for that pinned comment if you're wondering about an update on all of these. Did you pick up any of these products? I would love to know your thoughts down below. As always, let me know if you 
you have any questions, go ahead and leave those down below. I will, I'm sure, be using these products in the future, probably creating a couple more looks with the Nomad palette, trying on more lashes for all of you. So that is gonna be it for today, lovelies. I hope you're having a wonderful one and I will see you really soon.